the outer radius is going from the line we're, we're rotating about up to this horizontal line y equals 4. So that radius is always what length? 6. All right. <clears throat> um, okay, so our outer radius is 6. The area of a circle is what? Pi times the radius squared. So that's pi times 6 squared. <clears throat> but we are missing this chunk, okay, that's created by this piece right here, this, these radius, okay, these radii, from the line we're rotating about to the curve, okay? So let's think about what the lengths of those radii are. Okay, we're missing it, so we're going to subtract. It's pi times the radius. Well, we don't know what the radius is. Okay, we got to figure that out. <clears throat> so we know that this distance right here from the x-axis to the curve is whatever the y value is, right? That's y. And then we've always got an extra two units here on the end. So our y-coordinates are found given our function x to the fourth minus 2.3x cubed plus 4. And then there's always an extra two units on there because it's from the x-axis to that line, y equals negative 2. That is our radius, so it is squared. Now, those are our cross-sections. Those are the circles. We call those, um, we call those washers, okay? Think about a, a washer. Okay, there's a circle with a circle missing on the inside. These, these are washers. So when you watch the video, that's what Ken's going to talk about um, is those being washers. <clears throat> okay. Um, now, those are our cross sections. So think back to what we just did. We did the integral from where we started to where we ended of the cross sections. <clears throat> so where does this start? This starts at x equals 0. Where does it end? We don't know. We've got to figure that out. We've got to figure out where this curve intersects uh, with 4. So this is calculator active. That means you should use your calculator to graph it. What? Because they're circles. So the area of the circle is pi r squared. Okay. That's the y equals. We're trying to find out where it's equal to 4. We want to find the intersection. Huh? No, you don't do plus 2. We're trying to figure out where the function intersects with that line. Um, oh, here's something that you may or may not know. When you're trying to figure out intersections and you're trying to figure out maxims, minimums, zeros, and things, when it's asking for the first curve, you don't have to use the arrows. You can type in numbers. Okay? You can type in numbers. Because um, we can see that this intersection is somewhere between 2 and 3. So when it asked me for the first curve, or, or, or this one asked different. This, this one's different. Um, this one's just enter, enter, enter. But if you were trying to find a 0 and you knew that it was between 2 and 3 and it asked for the lower bound, type in 2, press enter, upper bound, plus 3, enter. That way you won't have to move. You won't have to spend time moving it to. Um, it's going to move it over. <clears throat> Um, intersect, they intersect in two places. I do have to move it over time. Good. That's not working. This works when you have to find zeros. Okay. There we go. 2.3. Okay, they intersect at 2.3. Technically, this is factorable. You could have figured that out. 7 equal to 4, 4 cancel, PCI. Anyways. Okay, 2.3. Hmm? 2.3 is where they intersect. Moral of the story. All right, if this is calculator active at this point, what you can do? Plug all that stuff in your calculator and tell it to integrate. Because they give you two points for the integrand, one point for your limits. So they give you one point. If all you figure out is where this starts and ends and can put that on your paper, you get a point, okay? <laughs> now, you do need to put something after it. Um, but, yeah, I mean, put at least put f of x dx, okay? 
Um, and then that's another point. Technically, you don't have to write this on your paper. You can just write f of x. You don't have to write the entire function if you need to save time. Okay, uh, you can do that. Type it in your calculator, press enter, get your answer of 98.867 or 868. Okay, remember, three numbers after the decimal. That's all. Every time, that's all. Don't round. Just write the first three numbers that come after the decimal point. That is the volume of the solid generated when that region is rotating about the line. Negative two. That is part A. Four points for part A. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's look at part B. Now, honestly, guys, I um. I would leave this problem, I would do this one last um, in, in whatever section you're in. I think you're given, um, you're given 30 minutes for the calculator active. You have two questions. You're given 30 minutes. Do the other one first and then spend the rest of the time that you have on this one. Um, and they give you, they don't just list A, B, and C like this. They list it like I've been doing the quizzes. Like they list A and give you space. They list B and give you space. So really part A is a little bit harder. Um, Part B arguably is a little bit easier. I mean, it, anyways, you can skip between the parts. You don't have to do them in sequential order as long as they're not related to each other. Okay, let's look at part B. Part B is what we just did, okay? Um, uh, in notes, not what we just did, but in our notes today. Region R is the base of a solid. For this solid, each cross section perpendicular to the x axis is an isosceles right triangle with a leg in the region R. Find the volume of the solid. Okay, so we've got our region. Our region's already graphed. We need to figure out our area formula. Okay, we need to figure out our area formula for this specific figure. So area of any triangle is one half times base times height. We've just got to figure out what those pieces are specific to this problem. So, it says that a leg of the isosceles right triangle is in the region R. So, it's isosceles and it's right. This is, I'm going to label it R because that's the leg that's in R. These parts are sticking up. Okay, these are up off the paper. Okay. So, the base and the height of an isosceles right triangle are the same. Right? Okay. So... We need to figure out, well, what represents that R right there? I don't, I'm out of colors here um, to draw my picture, but oh, let me just resketch my region R, okay? This is what R looks like. So we're talking about these triangles. The, this is the base of the triangle, okay? That's the base of the triangle. So let's figure out how we can figure out the height of that or the length of that base. We know that from the x-axis to here, that is our y-coordinate, right? That's f of x. Let me write as f of x instead of y. Okay, from the x-axis to the curve, that's the f of x. That's the y-value. This is the line 4 right here. So the whole distance is 4. That purple piece is f of x. We want the green piece. So how do we figure that? The whole piece is 4. 4 minus the y, or 4 minus f of x. Okay, so these bases are 4 minus f of x. So is the height. So our area formula here really is 4 minus f of x squared, because base times height. Base and height are the same, so it's squared. And once again, um, let's see here. We start at 0. We're ending at 2.3. We already figured that out in the previous part. Those are our areas. Those are the area, that is the area of a cross section. And once again, plug that into your calculator, have your calculator compute it. Now, be careful though, because it's four minus f of x. When you plug in your f of x function, you need to put it in parentheses. Okay, make sure you put it in parentheses right after that um, minus sign right there. And you get, your calculator should tell you 2.573. 
and that's three points. You get two points for the integrand, one point for the answer. They don't give you any units, you don't have to write units. Okay. That would be units squared though. No wait. That would be units cubed because it's a volume. Alright. Uh -huh. So we got two points left for the last part. <clears throat> okay, the last part six. A vertical line x equals k divides r into two regions with equal areas. Write, but do not solve, an equation involving integral expressions whose solution gives the value k. So let's draw what it's talking about. Okay, I'm just going to resketch my region here. This is region r. They're saying that there is some vertical line in here at some k that if we draw that in there, area 1 is going to be equal to area 2. Well, how do we compute the area? How do we compute area one? How would we find that area? Okay, good. From zero to k, wherever k is, we're going to do integral from zero to k of. It's between two curves, right? The top curve is four. The bottom curve is f of x dx, and it says these two areas are equal to each other, so that's equal to the uh, integral from k to 2.3 of the same integral. The top function is still 4, the bottom function is f of x, okay, dx. You get one point for the area of one region, so I guess if you just did half of it, and, and one point for the equation as a whole. I don't really know how they would I, I don't really know how they would determine that, but two points for that one. You don't have to integrate, you don't have to solve it, okay? You don't have to solve it, it just says write but do not solve. That's it. Two points.